what are my predictions about Switch 2? Well, just real quick, uh, it's gonna be obviously 1080p at 60 frames per second, finally. While Sony and Microsoft keep fighting for 128K or 20K, Nintendo's gonna be like, no, 1080p. We're gonna be fine with that, 60 frames per second. 60 fraps, that's all we need. Uh, it's probably gonna be retro compatible with at least the Switch. So we're gonna get like be able to play Switch games and the new Switch game, the new Nintendo console games. Uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it, you know. I think it's probably gonna have some to be like similar to the Switch because that was a huge success. So Nintendo cannot take a step backwards now. They're gonna have, they're, they're gonna have to develop a new console that's also a hybrid portable and plug into your TV, you know, with both options. So I think that's my, those are my three predictions for the Nintendo Switch. I know they are the most obvious predictions that probably everyone else is saying, but you ask for predictions, not wishes. Like, what do I want from, from Nintendo's next console? That's a different thing. Well, I, I actually want these three things as, as well, you know, but those are the basics. What I personally want for... Uh, the, the next Nintendo console... Uh, apart from those things, those three specs, um, those three specs, a better controller, because the dog bone was kind of shitty, you know, like a regular controller. I, I have the uh, the normal controller, the uh, the one that looks like an actual controller, you know. Maybe release the next console, you know, with a regular, normal-looking controller that feels great in the hands, not the fucking dog bone. Stop doing these freaking experiments, Nintendo. That's that's what I want. And I don't want the console to be like super huge, like the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. You know, just keep it small, keep it simple, and that's it. You know. Are you excited to uh, for the Freedom Wars remaster? I. I never finished the original game well, I, I liked it. I never finished it because it was too overwhelming, it was too God Eater, Monster Hunter like, you know, but the story was fucking phenomenal in that game. And I'm surprised that game like that is getting remastered considering it's influenced by books like 1984, which speak strongly against the uh, communism and communist oppression, and it's basically the same. If you, if you guys ever played the first hour of Freedom Wars, you don't even need to beat the game or make it halfway through. Just the first couple of hours of Freedom Wars, you can tell. I mean, the title is there, Freedom Wars. But I guess there's a lot of developers and publishers, well, not that many, but there are some out there who kind of like, you know, we need to bring some of these games that are anti-politics back. Now that there's been a slow rise in anti-political garbage, you know, people trying to destroy these fucking agendas and this communism, you know, and this war. You know, so Freedom Wars, with that title coming back, that's just great. I'm happy for the game. I fear, uh, I fear for the game, like I fear for every fucking new game and nowadays or remaster or remake or whatever, you know. But um, if you're going to remaster a game called Freedom Wars... Uh, where the characters are basically prisoners that get sent to jail for whatever, you know, for memes, like California just banned memes, the UK, you know, this go this world is going to fucking hell, man. They're gonna send that. They're gonna have to build a crap ton of prisons because everybody's gonna end up in prison at some point, right? Or they're gonna turn countries into prison, like China, you know. So that's what free. That's what the freedom wars is about. That's, I mean, it can't be any more clear than that. It's not like you play the game or, oh, this is a metaphor that can be interpreted in many different ways, so everybody's gonna have a different person. No, fuck you, man, no. Freedom Wars, the game itself is about fighting for freedom, fighting, fighting against an oppressive system that's putting people in jail for no fucking reason, for just breathing or talking or, or existing or opening their eyes, you know, or, I don't know, wearing a wristwatch. You know, that's Freedom Wars, so... Am I excited? Yes, I'm excited because a game like that, we need games like that to come back. We need more games developed like that. We need developers to create games like that. But we also need uh, publishers to bring back remastering, remaking, or porting games like that. 
you know, but unfortunately Freedom Wars is more of a hidden gem than anything and I don't know who's gonna publish the game and I don't think it's gonna be a huge success but uh, if it is, you know, that's gonna be good and um, if the translation isn't altered in this remaster I will fully support this remaster so I'm excited for it hopefully it will be left intact and it will succeed and it will be another wake-up call it's probably nowhere it's not gonna be nowhere near as the success of black meat wukong you know but hopefully it will be another wake-up call you know so people can play the game and be like oh my god you know this is what we're heading into this fucking oh, extremely extreme oppressive communism oh <laughs> thank you freedom wars yeah i'm excited for it have you seen the reveal for pirates in hawaii yeah i saw it last night and i was like dude <laughs> It's probably gonna be some kind of spin-off, right? With uh, starring this guy, this fucking douchebag. Uh, what's his name? This guy, this dumbass. Well, that guy, you know, that guy. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody fucking cares about Yakuza. Go to Majima. Thank you, thank you, Satan. I don't have a lot of fans. Contrary to people's belief, I don't have a lot of uh, Yakuza fans. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll be honest, you know, Ma Majima is a funny character, but I, I'm not sure I want to play a game with him as a main character. Like, eh, you know. And they're... Sega's starting to milk Yakuza. We're getting a, rem a remaster of uh, Kiwami on Switch, and then this new, the new game, which is what they just released one earlier this year, Infinite Wealth, and then the Gaiden episode, and then, come on, it's like Persona. They're, they're turning Yakuza into Persona, man. They're milking it and releasing spin-offs and whatever and whatnot. So it's like, oh my god. When I saw when I saw the uh, announcement of that game, the Pirates whatever, you know, I was like, oh my god. I bought Metal Maxino Reborn. Why did you pay money for that piece of shit, man? That game isn't it's exactly... It's trash. It's a terrible ring. Well, it actually... Okay, I just ranked that game last night. <laughs> In my blog, I think I gave it like a 7.2 or something, yeah. So why that? You know, despite the game being ass, well, it's because it still it still has great graphics, great music. There's some new songs in that game that are like, dude, what the hell? There's a place in the a base. I think there's a like this jukebox, and you can play a lot of songs. Some of those songs have lyrics and singing, singing, you know, great soundtrack, you know, and uh, yeah. The story is still okay, you know, it's based on the original game from like a few years ago, right? So it's okay, but everything else is like the battle system, the navigation, the exploration, the difficulty, the, it's just fucking garbage, man. So I, I gave it a 7.2, I believe 7.2, 7.4. I think it's 7.2 uh, because of the graphics and the music and shit, you know, but everything else, you know. You know, that list in my blog, if I was just ranking the games in base based on their gameplay alone forget about the story graphics and music you know wow the numbers will be like very different there will be a lot of games with like three out of ten 3.5 something like that if i'm being a, a very generous with a lot of games it's because i'm also considering the music and the graphics sometimes you have to separate that you know i streamed fucking tracia last night <sighs> 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 And um, some some of the songs were nice, so I'm like, I the music in Trace, yeah, most of the music is bad. It's fucking bad. The battle theme is bad. The town theme is bad, you know. But the overworld theme is pretty damn decent, you know. The main menu theme is also pretty decent. So it's not like, oh no, Trace, yeah, the music is a three out of ten. Come on, you know. I'm, I'm I gotta be a, a little bit more objective. Today we got Breath of Fire 1, any version, versus Golden Sun 1, any version, though there's only one version. The Switch Online version is not really a Switch version, it's just there in the Game Boy Advance emulator, okay? So, uh, any version, whatever, doesn't matter where you play it, but just Breath of Fire 1 versus Golden Sun 1. Not The Lost Age, not Breath of Fire 2, not the entire franchise, not Golden Sun, Dark Dawn and the DS, just the first Walt Golden Sun versus the first Breath of Fire 1. Breath of Fire 1 can be the Game Boy Advance of the Super Nintendo version of the Switch emulator, whatever. Let's begin.
Praetor says Golden Sun wins easily, great puzzles and overworld power use. Breath of Fire 1 is generic, bland and very forgettable. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just think the puzzles in Golden Sun are like pain in the ass, but that's just my opinion. Hong Luong says Golden Sun. It has better puzzles, battle mechanics is better, a huge range of classes. Uh, summons, storyline, both are just as good. There are more twists and turns in Golden Sun regarding character motives. Okay. Baja K says, Both games have big flaws for me, but Golden Sun is a tiny bit better, I think. The gene system was really cool and gave the combat a nice touch, and I love the graphics. Jay says, Golden Sun is one of the best JRPGs ever made. <laughs> Amazing graphics for the time, nice puzzles, challenging hidden boss, I love the gene system and trying out new combinations, man. What amazing memories. Okay. Newcomb says, I voted for Golden Sun because I like the combat and being able to equip the gene. The story is better than Breath of Fire, although puzzles were annoying in Golden Sun. Yes, they were. David says, I choose Breath of Fire 1, the first Breath of Fire Defender, because the characters are more memorable and the story may be a bit generic, but it's kind of dark. Okay. Aristo says Golden Sun 1 alone is worse than Breath of Fire 1, including 2. Golden Sun wins. Character wise, Breath of Fire is better, maybe in graphic wise, I guess. Music equal and story better in Golden Sun, but Breath of Fire it's maybe a bit more enjoyable for me. Okay. Mystery Kid says Breath of Fire for me, more mature story, decent cast of characters, okay battle system. The characters of Golden Sun were uninteresting for me. It looked like a bunch of generic anime kid characters. <laughs> okay. Gold, Baja continues saying Golden Sun is a perfect starter for JRPG for younger people and that's why it was fun for me and my friends. It's funny, colorful, easy enough to understand. Mostly, fuck some puzzles. Just a nice game. The poll is over! Breath of Fire lost with 33%. Golden Sun won with 67%. Well, I'm not surprised. I think Golden Sun is overall a more popular game. Even though Breath of Fire is, uh, belongs to a series that is really beloved and respected out there, but I've seen over the past three to four or five years that there's barely any love for the original Breath of Fire. Everybody usually praises three and four. There's the occasional guy who praises two, despite being a really infamous game, but it's got more love. Overall, most people will say Breath of Fire 1 is one of the worst in the series, sadly. But I'll, I'm just gonna say this, no Breath of Fire 1, no Breath of Fire series. That's all. And it's an early 90s game, so we gotta give it some respect for that, considering Golden Sun came out in like 2003. The JRPG genre was very well established. So maybe this was a bit of an unfair competition, but still, both games have a lot of similarities. They're on the Game Boy Advance, well, Breath of Fire is also on Super Nintendo, and they're on the Switch Online, and I don't know. I find these two RPGs to be kind of iconic, to be honest. Not as iconic as other... Like Chrono Trigger, Fantasy Star 4, you know, but iconic nonetheless. Well, actually, my pick is going to be Breath of Fire 1, but I do admit that Golden Sun is the better game, but because of what I said, Breath of Fire is a 1993 game, and Golden Sun is like 10 years older than that. Like I said, JRPGs were already pretty much established, and developers knew what to do right and what, to, what not to do anymore with certain things. Still... In terms of gameplay, I think when it comes to exploration, they're both just as fucked up. High encounter rate, and it's a pain in the ass. And escaping from battle, it's almost impossible. And um, the battle interface is fine for both games, I have no preference. So, yeah. But in, I'm, I'm gonna say one thing. Why I prefer the gameplay in Breath of Fire 1 over the Golden Sun gameplay is because I just can't stand some of the puzzles in Golden Sun. Some of the puzzles were straight up ridiculous and let alone hard, forget about hard. They were just annoying. They were like, oh, I already figured out, I know what to do. But that moment when you figure it out, it's like, oh my god, I know what to do, so I gotta, I gotta do this and that. <laughs> Why, Golden Sun, why? I I think I hate most of the puzzles in Golden Sun. And I'm going to say it right now. I never beat the game because of the fucking puzzles. I got to a point where I just rage quit. I rage quit in the puzzles of Golden Sun. 
And plus, I was like, this game has a high encounter rate and it's ruining it. In Breath of Fire, there are no puzzles. You just like grab, go to this door to grab this key to open this other door. That's it. And okay, so I guess Golden Sun has more interesting gameplay mechanics because it has the puzzles and the gene system. These little things, you know, that add a bit more to the battle system. So in terms of battle mechanics, Golden Sun wins. I think it's the better game. But uh, you can't transform into a dragon. I know it's dumb. Golden Sun is objectively better in terms of combat, but just by a hair. But I like Breath of Fire's battle system more because Ryu can transform into a dragon and that's badass. <laughs> it's just dumb, but that's my argument. Very subjective, I know that. Uh, the graphics, it's a tie. They look fucking beautiful on both. Don't make me choose. They look gorgeous on both. Maybe I should go with Breath of Fire by a hair because I like the pixel art a little bit more over the one in Golden Sun. So I'm gonna have to go with Breath of Fire here just because of the pixel art, but overall the visuals are beautiful in both games. Beautiful. The animations, the sprites, the, oh my god, the world, the backgrounds, the colors. Beautiful games, both of them. Music, again, I, th I think it's a tie. Motoi Sakuraba really did compose some bangers, where, whereas, you know, Motoi Sakuraba, he's usually the guy who creates a lot of generic music that sounds the same no matter the game. But in Golden Sun, there are several themes that are, like, really good. But in Breath of Fire, uh -huh, badass themes, the overworld theme, the, uh, the battle theme, come on. I can't choose. I'm sorry, I can't choose which game has the better soundtrack. I'm on... It, it's the same. And finally, the story. Well, it's more fleshed out in Golden Sun. But again, let me go back to my previous argument. In 2003, JRPGs were already established. So they had better storytelling, more character development. So Golden Sun is kind of cheating on that. Uh, and I like the story. But it's more oriented for kids. There are some dark themes to it. But it's more oriented for kids. Whereas Breath of Fire is a little bit more edgy. It has less development, so in terms of character development, Golden Sun wins, but in terms of storytelling, like, I don't know, if there was, if these games weren't games, but they were anime series, I would rather watch Breath of Fire, the anime, than Golden Sun, the anime, right? Because of the edginess and the darkness to it, it comes along with Breath of Fire 1. I prefer that, right? So, yeah. So, in conclusion, I think Breath of Fire 1 wins for me, I like it more, I finished it. And I think it's a great game, not that great. It is one of the worst in the series, but I like it. Uh, and Golden Sun is just for a 2003 JRPG, in my opinion. I know this is gonna hurt a lot of you, but it's just another JRPG from that era, from that generation. You gotta remember that PlayStation 2 was out, PS1 was out, so Golden Sun was nothing special for me. Breath of Fire is a 1993 or 1992 game, and it, it's just more impactful, you know? I think it's a more important game in history. That's all I gotta say.